It's very common to see the religious claiming that atheists are irrational, that we're wrong, that they have all the evidence, and somehow we just refuse to see it. And it's funny that the second that we look at their claims, their supposed evidence, none of them actually stand up to any kind of critical evaluation, right? So let's go and do some more of that, and I've got the perfect video for you. So, this time out, we're checking out a video by Dennis Pollack called Why Atheism is So Irrational. And I think the first thing that you're going to notice is that he's not really talking about us. He has concocted a straw man version of us in his head, and that's what he's attacking. But if you just listen to him, you'll see that he's really describing himself. Because the reality is... It isn't atheists that are irrational, it's Dennis Pollock. So let's get going. Logic can be a useful tool, but our logic is never perfect. As we read the Gospels of Jesus Christ, we can find all sorts of faulty reasoning and inadequate logic used by those who are determined to prove Jesus was a fraud. No, the Bible is filled to the brim with faulty logic, unsupportable claims, and religious wishful thinking. It's not our fault when you try desperately to get around your own problems. That's your fault. This is unfortunately something that we see all the time. The religious assume, not demonstrate, not prove, not support with any kind of evidence, they just assume that all the things that they believe, well, those things have to be true, and anyone who doesn't agree with them, well, there's got to be something wrong with us, right? They can't even consider the fact that maybe, just maybe, they're the ones that are doing it all wrong. And this is why we never get anywhere in conversations, because they just can't be wrong. It's absolutely impossible. Just ask them. And, of course, we can't be right. We are never right. Just ask them. Never once do they ever actually back up what they're just throwing out there. It's just blind faith. And blind faith, that don't get you anywhere. Let's consider a few of their arguments. In the sixth chapter of John, Jesus declares that he is the bread of life who has come down from heaven to give life to the world. Now, that's just too much for his critics who protest, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Oh, um, you're trying to examine the unsupported stories in the Bible and then just trying to prove somehow that they mean something. Yeah, that's not going to get you anywhere, sorry. But this goes right back to their blind faith because they just can't bring themselves to question whether those stories are actually worthwhile in the first place. I mean, rational people can, skeptics can, theists, yeah, not so much. And this goes for all theists everywhere, not just the Christians. The first question that needs to be asked when you're reading any religious text is, how do we validate that this happened at all? We can't just accept that it's true blindly. You have to be able to back it up with evidence, and the religious don't even try to do that. Because let's look at this logically. Yeah, I know we're the only ones doing that, but let's pretend. They're all doing the exact same thing. The Muslims are doing it with the Quran. The Christians are doing it with the Bible. The Hindus are doing it with the Vedas and all the other books that they have. And every group thinks that all of the other groups, the other groups that are doing the same damn thing that they are, somehow they're all doing something completely wrong while proclaiming that they, and only they, are right. Now, how does that work exactly? Somebody please explain. How is it then that he says, I've come down from heaven? Some of these folks had watched Jesus grow up, and now he was telling them he had come down from heaven? Ridiculous. Yes, it is. But I don't get how this guy is claiming that it was atheists that are irrational in the story when the people who were objecting to Jesus' claims, 
they weren't atheists. They were Jews. So maybe if he wants to pursue this line of reasoning, reasoning in air quotes, of course, maybe he needs to rename his video Why Judaism is So Irrational. Of course, he won't do that because he has an agenda, just like every other theist does. And I find it funny that in the comments, he's running around telling us what atheism is and, of course, what it isn't. Like, he's some kind of fucking authority on the subject. And it just proves, as is no surprise, what a complete dumbass he is. But let's continue. But there was a huge factor in this equation of which they were totally ignorant, and that is called the Incarnation, which is the centerpiece of Christian theology. The Incarnation declares that unlike ordinary humanity, Jesus existed long before his birth. Indeed, there never was a time when he did not exist. And you can provide evidence to show that any of that is true, right? Right? Of course, this is where religion runs into problems because the facts don't seem to impinge on the religiously irrational. It seems like he's being critical of the atheists, even though he's actually talking about the Jews, because we are not going to just blindly believe the crap that comes flowing out of his pie hole. Because here's the reality, which I know he won't like, but you got to do a whole lot better than just spouting off about the things that you believe for no good reason. Because this is where we get to explore the different religions that are out there and find out that he, like all of them, is applying a distinctly double standard. If a Muslim, for example, just showed up and started pontificating on what they think is the centerpiece of Muslim theology, Dennis here wouldn't care. He can say, well, this is the centerpiece of my religion, all he wants. And the Muslim can say, well, this is the centerpiece of my religion. And a Scientologist can come by and say, well, this is the centerpiece of my religion. Yeah, prove it. I'm just going to tell all of them to go take a flying leap because all of them are coming to the table with nothing but their own blind faith. And faith isn't impressive. Faith doesn't get you anywhere. You people need to get the hell over yourselves. God became a man and entered his creation. The Jews who ridiculed and scorned the idea of Jesus coming down from heaven to give life to the world knew nothing of this, of course, and it is impossible to come to right conclusions when all the facts, especially the most important ones, are unknown. So, wait a minute, he actually does know that those were Jews and not atheists, which makes me wonder what the hell that he's going on about. But I'm betting we're going to get to the end of the video and still be wondering about that. But as I said, here he is making entirely unsupported claims based on nothing but blind faith, and there isn't a fact to be seen anywhere. And of course, these people don't know what a fact is any more than they understand the meaning of evidence. So let's go to the dictionary and help them out and find that a fact is a thing that is known or proved to be true. Known. Proved. Not simply asserted. Not simply claimed. Proven. Yet the religious are utter rubbish at that, aren't they? Mostly because, as we know, they just don't care. This is all about their fifis, and it isn't at all about the facts, and they just use the words without knowing or caring if they've actually got a clue. Because unfortunately for them, they just don't. Another time Jesus told his audience, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. If Jesus, being the bread from heaven, gave them problems, this was worse still. They asked, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? He couldn't, and he didn't, and the church just made shit up because they were desperately trying to keep with the religious gobbledygook and not actually critically evaluate any of it. Lots of different denominations just interpreted it all in different ways because it's really a statement with no inherent meaning. Some think that it's just symbolic. Some think that it literally becomes flesh and blood after you swallow it. 
Some thinks it's entirely spiritual, and for others it's all real. It's actually body and blood. And all of them are completely undemonstrated. If we examine this stuff scientifically, we find out it's a cracker and wine, or grape juice if that's what you prefer. It isn't anything else. Now, mostly, this is done by the gospel authors, whoever they happen to be, to go along with things that were in the Old Testament. Luke, in chapter 24, verses 28 to 35, is trying to fulfill a supposed prophecy from the book of Judges. This calls back to other stories in the early Gospels about the Annunciation of Jesus. The same thing happened back when angels announced Samson's birth. The religious like to take these stories literally, and there's absolutely no reason to do so. Whoever wrote the Gospels, they were just trying to build upon the ancient tales of the Jews that were floating around out there and everybody knew. People were looking for the Messiah, and the gospel writers, again, they were anonymous, we don't know who they were, but they were trying to make it look like it was Jesus. And all of this is just stolen crap. Many who had been following him returned to their homes and refused to follow him any longer. Anybody saying such crazy things surely could not be the Messiah. But Jesus was not talking about literally eating his flesh. However, he made no attempt to straighten out his critics. We learn something about the nature of God in this incident. No, we learn something about how ancient peoples looked at their own religious practices. This stuff wasn't real. It was symbolism meant to appeal to primitive people who just didn't know any better and who didn't have the capacity at the time to ask intelligent questions. That hasn't changed much in the last 2,000 years, has it? Christians are still stupid when it comes to their religious beliefs, and I see no end to that in sight. The more seriously they take this nonsense, the less hope that I have. Good thing more people are realizing what a complete load of bunk it all is and leaving organized religion in droves. Because it really is that dumb. God does not feel obligated to make everything plain to us. The Bible tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. And this implies there will be times when we simply don't get it. And you know who else does that? Con artists. Scammers of all sorts who will tell you not to think about the garbage that they're spewing. They just want you to believe because they want your money. It doesn't matter if you're talking about Christianity or Nigerian princes. They all operate effectively the same. You just have to trust them because they have no capacity nor interest in proving that the things that they are saying are factually true. Because they're not. It's really funny how many people can't draw that parallel, isn't it? Nope, I guess the word isn't really funny. Fine. Not funny. Oh yeah, it's pathetic. We don't get what God is doing in our lives. We don't understand what the Bible means in certain places. We don't get why our loved one had to die young while ungodly people sometimes live to a ripe old age. We just don't get it. Which is why you turn to pastors and priests and ministers and all that kind of crap to explain it. You know, the ones with their hands out for your money. Of course, if any of this was reasonable to accept, you wouldn't need to do that. It would be obvious, and to those of us thinking about it rationally, it is obvious. It's obvious that it's a big load of horseshit. But the gullible people like Dennis here, they're not remotely concerned. It makes them happy, and that's why they continue to gobble it down with no critical thinking of forethought. Because they're just not interested so long as they get that dopamine hit in the brain pan, and they don't want to hear that they're doing it all wrong, because... <laughs> Who the hell cares about that? Just keep filling their heads with nonsense and keep filling the collection plate with your money. That's all that any of these people are interested in. Well, welcome to the club. Here's a little secret for you. You're not supposed to always get it. God reserves the right to try your faith by not running to you and giving you a detailed explanation every time some part of your life does not go according to plan, and you start whining. Yeah, 
tell that to the religious right who spend a lot of time whining and then just making shit up because it's the only way they can square their faith with the real world. Now, granted, they're not the only ones that do that because there are an unfortunately large group of people out there who are feeding just as much on the emotional fail train as Dennis Pollock is. But that just goes to show that this isn't only a religious problem. It's an irrational human problem. So along comes Dennis and tries to tell everyone that you don't have to have a clue what you're doing. In fact, it's a whole lot easier for the con men and the emotionally stunted pinheads if you just don't get it. That way they can fill in all the gaps and then try to fleece the terminally stupid with their con job. Please tell me that you see all of this as clearly as I do, because for me, it's blatantly obvious. As some were leaving in frustration over Jesus' words, Jesus turned to his twelve apostles and he asked them, Do you also want to go away? Peter, as was often the case, spoke for the group. He did not understand Jesus' teaching any more than those who were leaving. But he knew one thing. He had tasted the goodness and beauty and grace of Jesus, and he was not about to walk away. You know, if you had a dirty mind... You could read a lot of things into that if you really wanted to. Now, don't blame me. He said it. But this again assumes that any of that ever happened at all, something that the religious are not willing to question, and we're right back to feelings over facts once again. This shouldn't impress anyone, and it sure the hell doesn't impress me. He answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? you have the words of eternal life. And so it must be with every one of us when we face that dark hour where nothing makes sense and Satan whispers his evil lies into our ears attempting to persuade us to forsake the Lord. No, I think that's you people. Come to our churches, put your butts in our pews, and put your hard-earned money in our collection plates. I mean, there is no reason at all to think that there is any Lord to abandon, because that's just a tactic that they're using to get your backside in the door. They don't want you to ask any questions. They don't want you to have any doubts. It's pure faith and nothing but. And I'm sorry, but I'm just not stupid enough to rely on blind faith. That's you people, and maybe you ought to be better. Because this reminds me, just this morning, I was listening to the radio in bed, and there was a commercial that came on for a church. They're always for churches, because the churches are in desperate need for anybody to come in, sit down, and hand over their hard-earned money. And this is another case where they're just going, please, we need you to come back. Please, when you're ready, we're here with our hands out. And nobody on the religious side can see what's going on. In the seventh chapter of John, some felt they had a sure argument against Jesus being the Messiah. They protested, will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem, where David was? Yeah, and this is yet another place where the gospel writers just grabbed things that were well known from the Jewish scriptures and tried to stuff Jesus into them. Now, I could go into a lot of detail on this, on the hows and the whys and what likely went on, like the fact that Micah 5.2 doesn't actually say that the Messiah will come from Bethlehem. It actually refers to Bethlehem Ephrata, a tribe of ancient Hebrews. And then the author of Matthew quoted it, and I use that word very loosely, and he conveniently forgot the second part and tried to make it into a town. Well, it was never a town. Further, if you just read Micah 5 in context, it's clear that the tribe will bear a great military leader, and in verse 6, that leader will lay waste to the land of Assyria. Now, by the time that Jesus came around, 
Assyria was really no more, having fallen in 609 BCE, so Jesus couldn't have been what Micah was talking about regardless, but this is just one more instance of convenient reading by the gospel authors who were desperately trying to con the Jews into buying into their new religion. It was blatantly false, there was no prophecy, there was no fulfillment, but, you know, modern Christians, they just don't care. It was well known that Jesus grew up in Nazareth, a sleepy little village in the Galilee region. But every knowledgeable Jew knew Micah's prophecy, which announced that Bethlehem would be the city from which the ruler in Israel would come forth. Surely, this was unmistakable evidence that Jesus could not possibly be the Messiah. Now, I'm going to stop you right there and remind everyone that the name of this video is Why Atheism is So Irrational. He even capitalized atheism and irrational, yet he hasn't spoken about anyone but the Jews who are not atheists. I shouldn't have to keep pointing this out, but it just proves how asinine this jackass really is. He doesn't know what atheists are, as evidenced by his absurd comments below his video. He doesn't know what the Jews were, because of course he doesn't. And he's just buying into the religious bullcrap in the Bible, hook, line, and sinker, because it makes him happy. And these people wonder why we laugh at them. Okay, try to work that out and get back to us. We'll wait. These critics were both right and wrong. It is true Jesus grew up in Nazareth, but what they did not know was that Jesus had been born in Bethlehem. They were missing one important bit of information which totally undermined their entire argument. Well, since there's no reason to think that any of that ever happened at all, that's just nonsense. In fact, the gospel writers just grabbed common lore from the Jewish tradition and shoved it into the Bible without actually understanding the context in which it had actually been written. And that's why there are Christians today who will go through bizarre mental gymnastics to defend the biblical writing. Oh, it had different meanings, they'll say. Really? And how do you know that? Not what do you believe, not what do you have faith in, but how do you know? How do you defend that with evidence? Because they have nothing objective to point to. It gets them out of their theological jam, and therefore, that's just how it's got to be. Unfortunately for them, though, that's not how reality or critical evaluation works. You have to do more than concoct a workable solution in your head. You have to actually show that's what happened, and they can't do that, and they don't even try. Huh. I wonder why. You see, for logic to be completely reliable, you must, one, know all the facts, two, have perfect understanding and the ability to apply all the facts, and three, be completely unbiased. Which is why the religious get everything wrong so often. Absolutely none of those things apply to the religious at all. As I've pointed out before, they are starting out with an emotionally comforting conclusion that they've reached for non-intellectual reasons, and then they're looking only at the things that can get them there, while ignoring all of the things that do not. So they don't actually know any facts. They simply assert what their blind faith forces them to assert. They cherry-pick the data and leap to irrational ideas because it makes them happy. And then, worst of all, they're nowhere remotely close to being unbiased. Because if you go and look at the religious universities for which most of the New Testament scholars work, they almost all require a signed statement of faith to be employed. And if you violate your signed statement of faith, no matter what the evidence says, you lose your job. Being unbiased does not require that you have to follow your employer's religious values. The idea that these people have the slightest clue is laughable at best, yet people like Dennis here they simply don't understand what's going on. Because they don't care.
In spiritual matters, we certainly don't know all the facts, nor even a small percentage of them. You don't have the slightest idea if spirituality is even a thing in the first place, and that's kind of a problem. This is an emotional position, not a rational one. You can't just declare that magic is real. And I mean Harry Potter, Swish and Flick, Magic Wand kind of stuff, just because you really, really want it to be true. We cannot know anything about any gods, period, at least unless they leave some kind of objective evidence behind. Yet, because you really, really, really want it to be true, that's what you believe. The religious proclaim that they really know all about it. Really? Well, how in the hell have you done that? How have you objectively tested your beliefs to see if they stack up to demonstrable reality? And the answer is, and the answer always is, that they haven't. They can't. They haven't even tried. It's all just immature Fifi coddling because it strokes their malformed egos. So he's really not doing well so far. And I wouldn't be holding my breath that he's going to be getting any better. How pathetic are those foolish men who tell us there's no God? Except we don't. Because I've run into very few atheists who ever say that, but Dennis, like most other far-right apologists, they don't care about the reality of anything, do they? They're not going to let the facts get in the way of their faith. The reality is, we're not saying anything that they're pretending that we are. They're purposely misrepresenting us, if they even have a clue, and it isn't just a gigantic straw man because they're playing on the ignorance of the idiots in the pews. They don't know any better, and if people like Dennis have to lie to get them to fork over their hard-earned cash, well, so be it. And that assumes that Dennis isn't just as stupid as they are, which, let's be honest, it's hard to be sure on that bit either. Religion is often the blind leading the blind, right up to the people holding the sharp sticks and poking everybody's eyes out. The only one who could possibly say such a thing is someone who knows all things that are possible to know and has perfect intelligence and wisdom to apply all this ocean of knowledge. And if you fit that bill, you would be God yourself. No, we're just pointing out that you can't do any of the things that you're doing rationally. You are the ones making all of the claims. You are the one holding up the Bible as some kind of perfect, inerrant book. You're the one telling everyone else about the characteristics of your imaginary friend. Well, how are you doing any of that? How can you prove that any of the claims that you're making, how do you prove that those things are actually true? And the answer is, you can't. You're calling everyone else ignorant as a means of getting around your own stupidity. We're just asking you questions that you can't answer, and because you can't, you're just trying to shift the burden of proof so you don't spoil your free buffet. It's like these people are looking in the mirror and thinking they're looking at somebody else. No, you're just describing yourselves. Knock it off. Nor are we without bias. Jesus tells us that light has come into the world, but men prefer darkness over light because their deeds are evil. And you're still talking about yourself, Dennis. I mean, beyond the fact that you're taking anything in the Bible seriously, which is a problem, but then you pretend that it applies to us when it applies far more accurately to yourself. Seriously, how is this any different than proclaiming petulantly, I know you were, but what am I? And when we point out what you're doing wrong, and you're doing an awful lot wrong if you notice, you just ignore it and pretend that we're the ones with all the problems. It's ridiculous, but then again, so too is religion. Ungodly men find it much too inconvenient to accept the idea of a personal God who will hold us accountable at the day of judgment. Far better to go through life pretending there are a thousand and one different reasons why Christianity and the Bible itself could not possibly be true. No, we only need one. You've got zero evidence whatsoever to support your claims. You are full of shit. But when we point that out, 
You just don't want to hear it. You're too busy playing make-believe, and it's about time we stopped coddling the dumbasses of the world and started telling it like it is. We don't care about your feelings. Nobody should care about your feelings. We should only care if the shit in your head is actually true. I don't care if you feel insulted by the real world, Dennis. Nobody is here to make you happy. We're here to hold you accountable, and that's something that you and your ilk positively refuse to allow to happen. Because you are scared of us. You're scared of reality. If you actually had to deal with the facts, all of the facts, and not your feelings all the time, you wouldn't know what the hell to do with yourself. And that's kind of sad. This is why the religious have so many problems, and it's why they absolutely refuse to talk to us on a rational, adult, back-and-forth basis. They certainly refuse to listen to us. You know, they'd rather talk about us. They'd rather pretend they know what we're like, when clearly they don't. But they won't sit down and actually have an intelligent conversation. And when one side just won't listen, it's kind of hard to have any kind of rational conversation, isn't it? Sometimes logic is utterly insufficient. And the only alternative is discovery that comes through faith. Yeah, not so much. This is where the religious turn off their logical and critical thinking brain and just go with emotional stupidity. You have not proven anything, ever, at least when it comes to your religious beliefs. You are so brainwashed by your religious stupidity that... I don't know that it's possible to have a critical conversation with these people, and trust me, I've tried. I mean, most of them are, but the Bible, but the Bible, but, but, but. Yeah, okay, whatever. Have you been able to back up the claims of the Bible critically and rationally and with evidence? But the Bible. Yeah, it goes around and around and around in circles, and they never get anywhere close to being rational. The Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Open your Bible and read of God's goodness to us in Jesus Christ. Come to Christ by faith. Open the door of your heart and you will find all kinds of spiritual riches and blessings and eternal life that are freely given you in Christ Jesus. Sure. Right after you prove that any of that bullshit that you just spouted makes any kind of rational sense and can be defended with objectively verifiable evidence. Go ahead. Now, of course, he can't, and I think he knows it. I hope he knows it. I hope he's not that dumb. Which is why all of them rely on blind faith and overactive fifis, because this really isn't about reality. It's about ego. It's about stroking your fifis. It's about wanting desperately to have power and influence and be in on the secret that they'd all like to believe that they have, which they can't prove that they actually have. And that's something I've pointed out before, but perhaps not recently. It's a common emotional trope that they share in common with conspiracy theorists. They get a buzz thinking that they're party to an amazing secret that nobody else knows. It's where they get all these stupid secret societies and why Christianity started off as a mystery religion. Oh, we're special because we know the truth. And then they realize that just knowing the truth doesn't make them any money, so they went out to try to convert everybody else to the truth and then say, give us your money because you know the truth now. And that's kind of sad when you think about it. So anyway, what do you think of all of this? Did Dennis have anything intelligent to say? If so, would somebody please point it out to me in the comments because I must have missed it. Really, what is wrong with these people? It is so simple to see where they're going sideways, at least simple for us, but virtually impossible for them. And why is that? Oh, right, because they just don't give a damn. And that's really a pathetic way to live your life. I would never, ever, ever want to be that way. I did that once. I am eternally grateful that I will never be that way again. Because I could never, ever be that fucking stupid ever again. And maybe it's time for these people to knock it the hell off. 